Gary Erskine is a Scottish comic book artist who's been working professionally for over 30 years. His first published work, fresh out of art college in 1988, was The Knights of Pendragon from Marvel UK. Since then, he has worked on Star Wars, Terminator, Authority, and loads of work for DC, such as Hellblazer, City of Silence, Jack Cross, War Stories, and many, many more. He's also worked for 2000 AD. I spoke to Gary about 2000 AD and his work while he was promoting his new Kickstarter book, The First Men on Mars. The Kickstarter is still available. Check it out. It looks amazing. So here is an edited version of our chat. The full version is available here on the Icecast Live. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this. And let's chat to Gary Erskine. Hi, Gary. Thanks for uh, joining me uh, on this little chat about 2008. Um, yep. You did, you actually did a Judge Dredd, didn't you? You drew a, a Judge Dredd back in around Prog 700, I think. Um, 741. 741. Oh, he knows the number. He knows the number. Um, I know the number because a roller derby team actually made me a uh, Halifax Bruising Banditas at Thought Bubble, made me a t-shirt with the number 741. And I didn't know what the number meant. And they told me that was your first Judge Dredd. Oh, wow. That's so cool. <laughs> they were really decent. Um, oh, that Judge yeah. Dredd, uh, that was with Garth Ennis. Um, yes. Oh, we've, wor we've worked several times. In fact, the war, uh, war stories. stories. Is just War stories, yeah. yes. War stories. The first one was inking um, Chris Weston on Johan's Tiger. And then book two was, can't remember who, I think Carlos Esquera and David Lloyd were in that as well. And it was um, Archangel was the story. And I drew the whole thing. So I've worked on those. And yeah, the first first Judge Dredd was a Garth Ennis one. Um, twin, twin Blocks. It was a Twin yeah. Peaks pastiche <laughs> yeah no it, I, I i must dig that up i remember it's got a it's got a chris western cover isn't it um um hold on got hand. there you go that's that's the first one ah yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. oh i don't just have these lying around but i was using them for there you go garth ah. ennis so carlos escada cam kennedy david lloyd and myself that's that's quite an intimidating um, crowd of people to be part of. Oh, and Dan Deere. I forgot about that. Dan Deere isn't on my shelf there. Yes. It's, uh, in the Again, back. another classic 2000 AD um, character. Did you read 2000 AD in the early days? Oh, very, very much so. Very much so. Um, I, I mean, I was probably, it came at 77. I was nine years old when it first came out. And you had the glorious days of flesh shackle um yeah. judge dread mach one all those stories um and i absolutely loved it but m i can't remember which issue maybe in the 20s or something um i brought it home to show my mum and she banned me from like i think it was just the guy the cover was the guy in the space helmet with a frog inside and the, right. it was a bowling okay. cover okay. and my mum just found it the most offensive thing she'd ever seen so for about three years i had to go to a friend's house to read it before ah. i was old enough to um to actually buy it myself but um a bit of a wow. star lord fan though i have to say you were fan of the it... yeah the glossy covers uh yeah I, i'm i'm too young for star lord but um i do like those covers the the, the glossy covers of star lord are amazing um, oh, it, it was, the, 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 there might be a copy over there. Um, Star Lord actually reminded me of um, the sort of European market. It had a sort of that sensibility, like uh, Metal Who Long, the French mm -hmm. magazine that turned into heavy metal in the US. Um, I mean, I would only have been about 10 or 11 at the time, but I, it seemed different. And yeah. that, that Strontium Dog story, I feel is a better debut than Dread. I, I mean, <laughs> Dread's iconic, but there was something Carlos Esquera did in that first episode that still is astounding. Um, yeah, I mean, there was, I, you've got so many things that crossed over from Star Lord to um, 2000 AD, the yeah. ABC Warriors. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. ahead of his time. Definitely. Oh, very much so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, do, you read, yeah. do you read 2000 AD now? You 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I still, I still pick up. Yes, it's, it's, again, it's a mess here. I still pick up the paper copies. Uh, ah, not one to this yet. <laughs> yeah, I do I, a video uh, reviewing each episode of 2000 AD. Oh, so, right, yeah. cool. I'm quite positive. Sometimes, though, you know, I say say it like it is, but uh, uh, yeah, I still think 2000 AD now is just, you know, it went through the doldrums in the 90s, definitely. But yeah. there's so many good things. Um, in 2008 at the moment i think absolutely i would agree and also the fact that they brought out the magazine and then there was that um was it was it still ipc or was it fleetway when they brought uh, brought out um crisis and that had that political oh, edge yeah, as well yeah, yeah. yeah crisis, I, I love crisis the crisis um crisis hit me just when i got into 2008 uh but then you had garth ennis's troubled souls and Trouble my souls. personal favorite uh true faith that oh my mind. god yeah oh yes yeah. So good. and i think it was necessary um when when marvel and dc were so obsessed with superheroes and and it's a big market there's a big audience for that i i always felt that 2000 ad star lord tornado offered something different and then you had a political twist uh, and and you know um either up front or or more subtle with crisis i thought the british market um was very creative and i can't quite get to them because of the way my desk is sorted but um warrior magazine oh yes warrior was yeah. hold on. warrior was uh, tremendously influential in fact i can't get to it there warrior? we go <laughs> yeah i haven't put those i haven't got that yet but i do have i've got number one. Oh yes so, uh, um, yeah brilliant Brilliant. So I am a big fan of the new, of the recent frogs. I'll oh, show you this. Oh, nice. Ah. Signed, signed oh, by oh, Alan Moore. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Issue One three. final quick question. <laughs> I'm a big Grant Morrison fan and uh, Invisibles, I absolutely love. But can you tell me what Earth ha this was about? I, 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 I oh. only inked it and I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> Honestly, this, this, I mean, I love Grant Morrison, but this makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I was getting the pages in order daily, literally daily. By, and look, at, you know a lot of the detail on those pages. Chris was working on those. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So fast. Um, nice. And then we got a kind of shorthand where I, I knew how much detail he wanted to put in. So if he did five lines i'd put in 10 so we we kept the the momentum going but um they were coming in so fast i i couldn't make head nor tail of it i didn't have access to the script but with chrissy's pencils they're so tight you you can see everything is laid out but yeah. it was just a wonderful i think it was about 18 months we spent working on that a bit of a slow lead into it but by the end of it it was a literally a page a day and wow. it was just some of the most wow imaginative yeah. wonderful art i've ever been part of um i mean i think even with the script you might have been struggling but uh it does look <laughs> absolutely gorgeous oh but, thank uh, you thank you thanks for that gary and uh keep reading that 2080 <laughs> will do will do <laughs> <laughs>